Now we have here the instance of this rich young ruler. And the Lord Jesus loved this man. May I say that it's another very wonderful story. And I'm just going to touch it for the simple reason. We've had it in Matthew and we had it again in Mark. And one thing that we'd like to say about this young man is that our Lord made inquiry about the young man's conduct. You know, the Ten Commandments are divided into what's known as the pietus and the probatus. The pietus is a man's relationship to God. The probatus is a man's relationship to man. Well, the very interesting thing is this is the life of this young man. And this life of this young man was a good life, by the way. He kept the part of the commandments that relate him to man. And the very interesting thing is that this young man could pass on those first ones. But what about his relationship to God? That was his problem. He demanded that the young man put Jesus first. That's what he's saying. And he had riches, and he'd been putting those first. And he showed the young man the impossibility of man to save himself. You've got to give up everything and come follow me. And in spite of all of that, Jesus loved this young man in spite of the fact he would not follow him. And he'll love you. Well, who is that young man? I do not know who he is. He may be you today. I don't know. But he loves you. I do know that. And let me just read this. A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and the mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. And I say to you, he's a remarkable young man. But down here in his relationship to God, that's exactly what he did not have. All right, we'll go by that then. And we find again the Lord Jesus is announcing his death to his disciples in verse 31. He announces that. And then the blind man is healed near Jericho. We've had that before in both Matthew and Mark. 